Uh, what's up? I'm Eric here. Today's video is about MPU 6050 with Mahoney algorithm. Uh, I'm gonna compare two approaches, which is based approach using the library from I2C dev and a Mahoney algorithm. Uh, if you need a detailed comparison, uh, I recommend you to read the paper. There are lots of good papers always. I will also use this to make my own dice. I'm gonna try putting ESP32 and MPU6050 in the real dice and then spinning a virtual dice. Uh, it's still a little lacking to make something stable, but let's try it. One of my previous projects was to connect ESP32 and MPU6050 to send the oil angles via BLE to the flow drive which is I made and rotate the 3D object with the value. I use the same hardware wiring as this project and the MPU6050 library is from I2C dev so if you need a way to install this library, please refer to the video above. If not, just skip it. Uh, first, let's configure the project using the MPU6050 of I2C dev which is commonly used. Uh, if the library is properly installed on your end, you can find it from the Arduino ID example tab. I'm gonna use the Reddit version which is Motion App version 6.12. Uh, I'm gonna make some modifications to this project to fit my hardware pin from this example source code. Uh, it's exactly the same as the previous project. Uh, my built-in LED pin is 22, and to communicate with MPU 6050 through I2C protocol, I set the pin SD, which is the data line, and SCL, which is the clock line. Finally, I begin the wire with these selected pins and clock speed 400 kHz. Uh, this example source code needs to get a key to run it from the serial. I don't need this part, so let me delete it. The reason why I'm starting from this scratch is some people say there is an issue in the previous project. As the library is updated, there may be parts that need to be modified. Uh, this is going to show you how we can fix and build the problems that occur in the current version. The problem with this is there are duplicate declarations. You can find and remove them. Open your Arduino library folder and go to MTU6050 and open the header file of Motion App V6.12. Remove all parts for the interior type. Save and go back to the Arduino ID and build it again. Uh, the second problem is that there is no trash buffer length. You can also do this by simply adding it. Uh, open your Arduino library folder again and go to MPU6050 and open the header file of MPU6050. You can add the defined buffer length 32 anywhere in this header file. I'm gonna add it at the end of defines. Done. Let me build it again. This time, build is successful. Let me set the port which is connected to my ESP32. That's it. It's easy to solve the problems. Let's see if the raw PGR values are output properly. Here you are. You can see that the initialization part is really fast uh, compared to the previous one. The release note says once no motion state is detected, the calibration completes within 0.5 seconds. I think there have been more improvements besides this. Uh, 2011, XIO Technology team made a small device called XIMU and this project by implementing Magiwix, HRS, and IMU algorithms. Uh, basically, it's 9 off with a magnetometer and all sensor specs is better than MPU6050. Uh, Mayonnaise is more appropriate for very small processors, whereas Magivix can be more accurate with 9 dope system at the cost of requiring extra processing power. I'm gonna use Mayonnaise algorithm in this project since it's more most relevant to wide variety of devices, but it's easy to switch to Magivix if you prefer to test another algorithm. Uh, to compare the program using the Mayoni algorithm with the base approach which is using MotionApp just with it, I will now prepare the Mayoni algorithm. 
When you search for many algorithms on Google, you can find many libraries and source code for this algorithm. Uh, based on the source code found in one of the uh, blog posts, a slight modification has been made to operate on ESP32. You can find the link of this source code in the description below and also contains the original post URL. Uh, the first thing we need to do is calibration. The program on the left is the for calibration and the program on the right is running with the memory algorithm. I will find the offset of the accelerometer and gyroscope by calibration. Let's run the calibration. Oh, there are warnings, not errors. Uh, it's not a critical, so I'm skipping it now. Uh, open the serial monitor. Let's check the result. Uh, now then, we need to apply these values obtained from the calibration to the right side, which is working with the memory algorithm. All fields are predefined. After find the fields of the offset, and you just need to update each value. Good to go. The result values are raw PGR, which is converted from quaternion. All done. Let's try to run it. Uh, the rotating expression method using the oil angle was used a lot in the past, but there is a problem called gimbal lock. To put it in simply, uh, three-way guidance is necessary to express rotation, but if the combination of the angle goes wrong, one degree of freedom will disappear and the rotation angle is no longer computed. Uh, you can see here all the cases of gimbal locks. The two rotation axes overlap and you can tell which one is moving. Uh, to address this issue, we need to use quaternion. There are many good videos for oil angle and quaternion on YouTube. If you need more explanation, please look for it. Let's compare MPU 6050 using the base approach and Mahoney's algorithm. First, this is using base approach. In the lower left corner, you can see the mean, maximum, and minimum values of 500 samples of each axis of rotation. Uh, the approximate noise can be checked when there is no rotation movement. Uh, the graph currently shows the current value of lower PGR, and the raptor axis is forced from minus 180 degrees to plus 180 degrees. The bottom axis is already set to show 500 data. Uh, the vertical axis is automatically changing. One thing to look at here is the time when data is calculated. Uh, the average time to calculate uh, each axis of rotation with this base approach is about 8 milliseconds. Uh, you can see that the mean value does not change much when the axis of rotation is severely moved. Uh, it's working well and stable. Uh, well, uh, this base approach was less noisy and more stable than I thought. I think we can use this in many projects like uh, drone control. Uh, it's time to see the result of the memory algorithm. Uh, finally, we are here. This is running on memory algorithm. Can you see the execution time? It's only 4 milliseconds the twice faster than the base approach. Uh, clearly, the response speed to sensor movement has increased. Also, the graph is being displayed faster. If you feel it yourself, you can feel that the speed is higher than the previous one. Uh, according to the paper about comparison of AHRS using foot-mounted MIMU sensor data, uh, this table shows the root mean squared error of the all angles for Magic, uh, Mahoney, and the base AHRS. The first number represents the oil angle for the sense data with noise, and the second number is without noise. The magic scores best for the sense data with noise included, outperforming both Mahoney and the base AHRS. I didn't touch the Magic's algorithm today, but it seems like Magic defeats the Mahoney and the base AHRS in terms of RMS on the sense data with noise when compared to the ground truth. In terms of execution time of the three approaches, uh, mainly takes less time to compute compared to the other two approaches. This is a timeless video of how I made my dice. 
Uh, my ESP32 and MPU6050 are being built using connectors for future reuse. Also include the battery as it must be placed in the dice. Uh, in the next video, let's see how to make an application from Unity 3D can rotate a virtual dice. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.